episode of Toy Time is brought to you by two teachers. Today we have Miss Maggie Murphy, who is the 2020 Burns Welcome Fund Northwest Teacher of the Year, and her colleague, Miss Sergil from Allegheny County Schools. Together, they're gonna help you navigate an exciting lesson. In this episode, you are going to help solve a mystery. A mystery is a story involving a crime or an unusual event. You are gonna become a detective today and help solve a mystery in Miss Murphy's classroom. Good morning, detectives. You will not believe what happened when I came into my classroom this morning. I walked in and I saw this mess. Can you believe that someone would do this in my classroom? I didn't know what to do. And so I immediately got my phone and I called Miss Sergil. And I said, Miss Sergil, there's a mystery and I need you to help me solve it. So I called her. When I called her, I said, Miss Sergil, there's a bean bag. There's books all over the floor. There's some crumbs. There's a spilled drink. And I don't know what has happened. And she told me that these are clues. Miss Sergio, why do you think they're clues? Because I love to read books, and one of my favorite genres is a mystery. So I know that mysteries must have clues. I think that we have a mystery to solve today. Will you help us, please? Now that you learned what the mystery is that you need to help solve, it's important to start collecting clues. A clue is something that leads you closer to solving a mystery. Listen up because you're about to learn about two important clues. So the first clue that I noticed when I was looking at our crime scene is a box of spilt books. So I know that this person must be a reader because who would spill all of these books? The next thing I noticed is a bean bag. They must have been wanting to get comfy because I know in my classroom, my kids love to read books in the bean bag. And the third clue I noticed are Pig the Pug books. Hmm, I love Pig the Pug books and I think they're really, really funny. But who else loves Pig the Pug books? Miss Sturgill, I think I know someone who likes pugs, he may be a suspect. But there's more clues here too that we need to talk about. So I notice these tiny crumbs look like goldfish. And I can see that someone also had a drink and they let it spill and didn't clean it up. It looks like coffee or hot chocolate. So I wonder if they were having a snack as they read and they got comfy and they were looking through the books. Maybe our, maybe the next thing that we should do is interview some of our suspects and maybe, maybe we should make a plan together for our clues and our suspects and what we think has happened here and that will help us solve the mystery. What now that you learned two important clues, let's stop and make a prediction. Making a prediction means that you make a guess based on clues from the text. Take a second to say a prediction out loud about who you think made this mess in Ms. Murphy's classroom. Hi, Ms. Christine. Hi. How are you today? I'm well. How are you? Fine, thank you. Um, I just wanted to ask you a couple questions. Did, did you work yesterday? Did you have a good day? I did. I had a great day. Good. Uh, did you happen to go in my room at any point during the day? No, I didn't. Are you sure, Miss Christine? Yeah, I stayed in here the, all day. Well, that's interesting because there's a scene in my room, and I followed the clues, mm -hmm. and they led me to you. So if you weren't in my room, how do you explain this coffee cup in the library trash can? Well, I don't know. It wasn't mine. You didn't drink coffee yesterday? I don't even like coffee. I mean, what is this? Even French vanilla? What, what is that? Well, if it's not yours, who could it be? Now that we've talked to Miss Christine, 
let's take a moment to think about our evidence. Evidence is information that proves if something is true. Do we have any evidence that we can count on in this investigation? Okay, detectives. We stopped in the library to see if we could determine where this coffee cup came from, and it led to a dead end with Miss Christine. So we ventured on down the hall, and we thought back to who might read Pig the Pug books, and we remembered our principal, Mr. Hall, has been reading every night to the students while they've been at home, and so we wondered if we could find any evidence in his office. And so we snuck in, and we investigated on his desk, and what did we find? A Pig the Pug book. And goldfish. Two clues from the room that lead us to Mr. Hall. Mr. Hall, how do you explain these things in your office? Were you in my room yesterday? I was in your room yesterday. <gasps> we solved it, detectives. Why are you in there, Mr. Hall? I just missed the kids so much, and I wanted to go and read in the spot where they normally are. But I, I, I just miss them. I miss them so much. Oh. I'm sorry. Detectives, we did it. We solved the case. And Mr. Hall missed the kids so much, he went in there and he read a book. He probably read all of those books. And he thought about you guys. And then Miss Sergil and I, today, we followed our clues and solved the case. So if there's ever a case that needs solving, remember to follow your clues and use your evidence. And you will always lead you to the person that read books in the classroom or whatever the mystery may be. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for playing along with us today. Now that we solved the mystery, it's time to draw some conclusions. Drawing conclusions is when good readers use clues in the text plus what they already know to make an inference. Can you help me make an inference as to why you think Mr. Hall made the mystery mess in Miss Murphy's classroom? Hi kiddos, now that you solved the big mystery of the school, see if you can solve the mystery of what really happened to Humpty. This is from the files of a hard-boiled detective by Joe Dumpty as told to Jeannie France Ransom, illustrated by Stephen Axelson. So first, we see a map of Mother Gooseland. What really happened to Humpty? Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Humpty Dumpty was pushed. At least I think so. Who am I? I'm Joe Dumpty, Humpty's younger brother. You probably haven't heard of me. I was never mother's favorite, mother goose that is. Ever since she became police chief goose, she thinks I'm just stirring up trouble with my detective business. Yes, Mother Goose always liked Humpty best. He's such a good egg. That's why I think it's a crime that he fell off the wall. After all, he'd been sitting up there for as long as I can remember, with no problems whatsoever, until that awful scrambled up day. It was a picture book perfect morning. The old woman who lives in a shoe had just dropped off her kids at the Jack and Jill daycare center. The three little pigs were putting the finishing touches on their latest house. And across the field, Humpty was sitting on the wall. I wish I'd stopped to crack a few jokes with my brother, but it was Humpty's first week as captain of our new neighborhood watch program, and I didn't want to distract him. Besides, it was almost nine and I had to get to work. I made a quick stop and ran into Little Red Riding Hood. The muffin man scrambling to fill a big order, Red said. I can't even buy one lousy muffin for my grandmother. She sniffed loudly and stomped off with a huff. With my espresso in hand, I headed to the office. And she says right here, if you want a muffin, you're out of luck. 
As I opened my office door, the phone rang. It was Little Miss Muffet. Joe, something's happened to Humpty! I raced to the wall. Miss Muffet was there, cell phone in hand. I called 911, she sobbed. I looked at my brother. He wasn't making a sound. Whoever did this was gonna fry. And she's saying, at least he landed sunny side up. I walked back around the wall and that's when I saw it. Something was shiny was tucked under Miss Muffet's tuffet. She was on the phone, so I didn't bother asking if I could look under her tuffet. I just did. Sometimes detectives have to act first and ask questions later. It was a pair of binoculars. Not just any binoculars. These puppies were the official binoculars of the neighborhood watch program. Humpty had been showing them off ever since he'd become captain. What are you doing with those? Muffy asked, grabbing the binoculars. I was just about to ask her the same thing when, and she said, were you looking under my tuffet? All the king's horses and all the king's men arrived. They couldn't put Humpty together again, so they scooped him up and rushed him to the hospital. What's the story? I asked Muffy. I wanted some answers. Muffy sighed. I was just shooting the breeze with Humpty, waiting for Spider. Humpty was letting me try his binoculars when suddenly this huffy puffy wind blew him right off the wall. Police Chief Goose pulled in her big honking cruiser. I was at the Three Pigs, she apologized. The wind we had this morning blew down their new house. I just told Joe that the wind made Humpty fall, Muffy said. Ah, made Humpty fall, said a small voice out of nowhere. Huh? It's my fault, Spider said, dropping down from the tree. I was rushing to get down here by nine this morning, my usual time, when this puff of wind pushed me straight toward Humpty. I must have scared him, because the next thing I knew, Humpty was on the ground. I zipped home, but I knew I had to fess up. Humpty was my friend. And he says, I almost wet my web. My brother wasn't afraid of anything. That's why he was the perfect neighborhood watch captain. What happened to Humpty wasn't your fault, Spider, I said. It wasn't anybody's fault, Muffy chimed in. It was an accident. Agreed, Chief Goose said. Go on to the hospital, Joe, she told me. I'll write up an accident report. And she says, remember the giant? Sorry. He's, he says, keep off the grass, and he wasn't doing that. Accident report? No way. But Chief, Humpty's been sitting on the wall for years without a wobble, I said. Then the first week he's neighborhood watch captain, he suddenly falls off? The same day the pig's house blows down? Coincidence? I don't think so. Chief Goose sighed. Okay, Joe, since Humpty's your brother, I'll give you till five o'clock to play detective. If you don't have anything by then, I'm writing that accident report. There's no case to crack. I didn't have much time. I hurried to the hospital. Thanks to the miracles of modern technology, combined with some nifty techniques the doctors discovered when Jack fell down and broke his crown, Humpty was on the mend. He didn't remember a thing. I needed to hit the streets and question a few characters myself. And Humpty says, I'm shell-shocked. My first stop was the bears. I rang the doorbell three times and was about to give up when the door opened to reveal a bear foot. I was expecting a bear foot. I showed the blonde my badge and asked about bear's whereabouts. I'm house sitting, she said yawning. Late night, I asked. Early morning. Some dog started howling and woke me up. How early, I probed. 9 a.m., she said. But now that I'm awake, I want to, want to come in for some porridge? I hated to tell her no, but I was on the clock, and that clock was ticking. He said, sorry, I'm on a low-carb diet.
next house I visited belonged to the, one, the only dog owner in the neighborhood, Old Mother Hubbard. Maybe her pup had been howling this morning, but Mrs. H said, I gave my dog to the farmer in the dale last week. He needed help with his sheep, and unlike mine, his cupboard is never bare. Mrs. H shook her head sadly when I told her about Humpty. I would have never done anything to Humpty, not even to feed my poor dog. Maybe you should talk to my neighbor, Mrs. H added. She seemed to be in a big hurry this morning. And she's saying she's a crazy chicken. Chicken Little answered the door, looking more nervous than usual. A am I in trouble? I played it cool. You tell me. I said, keeping a close eye on her in case she tried to fly the coop. I if it's about what happened this morning, it's not my fault, Chicken Little said. You know what happened this morning? Of course I know, she shouted. The sky fell, and I didn't warn anyone. I've learned to keep my beak shut. And her little chicks are saying, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. The sky didn't fall this morning, I said. Humpty did. From her surprised look, I knew she was innocent. He's going to be okay, I said. I love that egg like he's one of my own, Chicken Little sniffled. I handed the tender chicken a tissue. So tell me where you were around nine, I said. I was on my morning power walk, she answered. I just passed Muffy and Humpty when the wind howled overhead. I just walked behind the wall and next thing I knew the sky, I mean Humpty was falling. I ran straight home. Was Humpty sitting on the wall when you saw him? Yes, but Muffy wasn't sitting on her tuffet. Chicken little paws. That's funny. She's usually digging into her curds and whey. Funny indeed. As I left my friend clucking to herself and scanning the sky, I heard a commotion coming from the pig's house. What was left of it, anyway? Huff, puff, huff, puff. I need more exercise, I thought as I ran across the field. How many times have I heard people say that today? Not the more exercise part, the huff, puff part. Part as in a huffy, puffy wind. I found the pigs fighting over, of all things, a cell phone. I thought everyone had one of the, those these days. Apparently not. Okay, guys, hand it over. I said, whose phone is this? Give me it. It's my turn. I had it first. We don't know, the pig said. We found it this morning after our house blew down. Can we keep it? It has some cool games on it. Oh, just then the phone rang. Actually, it howled. Who would have have a howl for a ringtone? I took a guess and I disguised my voice. Yo, I growled. I got the binoculars, the voice on the phone said. Now I want my yummy wummy muffins. We had a deal, remember? Be at the wall in five minutes. In five minutes, it would be five o'clock. Yikes! I called Chief Goose and told her to meet me at the wall. The clues were adding up. The muffins that no one else could buy, the howling that didn't come from a dog, the huffy puffy wind, not to mention the binoculars that someone wanted, but why? I had a hunch. So readers, now what I want you to do is use what you know about being a detective to fill out our anchor chart that, that is elements of a mystery. See if you can figure out what happened to Humpty. Okay, everyone, now that we've read the book and we've solved the mystery, we're going to go back through and talk about the elements that we used to solve it because you guys were great detectives and you knew what was happening. So let's go back through and talk about how we solved this mystery. So it all started with what really happened. Now, this was our mystery. What really happened to Humpty? That was our question through our book, and that was our mystery that we had to solve. So we know that we had clues along the way. We know that there were events that took place that led us to this very interesting um, discovery at the end. And our suspects, we had to investigate. So it all started at the wall. The wall is the setting of our story. That's where Humpty was sitting and where he fell from. And what started our mystery was these binoculars. So when we discovered that he was in the neighborhood watch and Miss Muffy had the binoculars, that gave us our first clue. Then 
there was a mysterious cell phone. We didn't know who it belonged to, but when the three little pigs had it and were fighting over it, and Joe went over there and it howled instead of rain, and someone answered it and they had a big, deep, gruff voice, I started to figure out maybe who a suspect was. So, in my mind, we had several suspects. We had Chicken Little, who was acting funny, Chicken Little is also our distraction in our story, so I'm going to move her here, too. She could go in both places. So when we went to interview, when Joe went to interview Miss uh, Hubbard, then we kind of understood that maybe Chicken Little was acting funny. Um, we also know that a spider blew into Humpty, which was an event that made us think, okay? So we were finding evidence here. We know that the three little pigs' house was blown down that morning, and so we think that that wind might have something to do with it. So at the point where we lost the binoculars, Muffy became a suspect. When we had the cell phone, the wolf became a suspect. And then we know that Miss Muffy stole those binoculars to exchange them for muffins, and that led to Humpty Dumpty following when the wolf blew the house down. So Muffy and the wolf were in cahoots and we used all of the evidence in our chart to figure out this mystery. You guys did a great job today.